Hi, my name is Daisy Abbott. I'm a serious games researcher at the Glasgow School of Art. I'm also the co-investigator on the Secrius project, where we take a serious games approach to cybersecurity. This short video is about why we design serious games in the way that we do, using a method called triadic game design. Triadic game design has three elements, reality, meaning, and play. And all good serious game design that results in an effective serious game has to include all aspects of these three elements. And it takes place here in the center of this diagram. What is reality? Well, reality is the real world subject that your game will be about. It's about the topic of the game. And why are you making a game in the first place? So we ask you to define what problem are you trying to solve? Meaning, on the other hand, is about the overall purpose of the game, including the learning approach. And we ask you to define what is going to change, what will be different when your players play this game. And of course, to answer this question, we need to know what problem you're trying to solve from the reality phase. Thing well, rather than one large thing poorly. And what type of change are you trying to make? It could be something to do with giving players knowledge. They, they actually learn something through playing your game. Or it could be that you're trying to change people's attitudes towards something, you know, affect the mindset of the players. Or it could be that you are training skills. So repeated actions during gameplay help to embed a skill for the player. So what exact kind of learning is your game trying to achieve? And then how do we achieve that? So what sort of learning will help your players get from where they are to the change that you want to make? And I've identified three different tasks here, three different learning tasks, all of which have different kinds of learning. If you're learning to play a piece on the piano, you, you probably already know how the tune goes and the learning is about how you get your fingers to make the sound that you want. Creating a good password, if you're registering for a website, that's about recall what makes a good password in the first place. And then an element of creativity. What password am I going to choose that I can remember and that will fulfill the conditions of this website's password um, criteria? And then finally, learning a new language. Um, French verbs, for instance, it tends to be about learning a pattern for all the verbs ending in ER, for example, and then abstracting that knowledge and applying those rules to new verbs as you learn them. But of course, if you're learning, if you're learning irregular verbs, then it's just a case of having to memorize them. And that's a different kind of learning again. So if you take nothing else from this video, please take that different things are learned in different ways. And the phrase we use for that is learning mechanics. Also, I want to just identify the role of emotional design because emotions can support learning. If you surprise somebody, it can be very memorable or you can create a fun game to play that will encourage repetition of learning actions. So don't neglect the emotional learning design aspect of your game. So our learning context then affects both of these things. Learning context is absolutely crucial. And what do I mean by this? Well, who are your learners? How old are they? Who are they playing with by themselves, in teams, with their parents, with their friends? When are they playing this game and for how long? Are they, are they playing repeatedly? Are they coming back to the game multiple times or is it going to be played just once? Where does the gameplay take place? Uh, is it on a bus using a mobile phone? Is it in a classroom? And then finally, what materials or technology do you need to deliver the gameplay? And all of these things absolutely inform both what is going to change, but also how you're going to achieve it. Finally, then play. Play is how the game actually works. And game mechanics are methods that we use for the player interacting with and affecting the game world. And the game mechanics should arise from your learning approach because the game mechanics should reflect the learning behaviors that we want to emerge from players playing the game. So what game mechanics will deliver the learning mechanics that you need? 
So there we are, reality, meaning and play. And you can see that whilst this isn't a linear process, we need to define what the problem is in order to define what change we want to make. And we need to define what change we want to make in order to de design game mechanics that will actually deliver that change. So that's why we do serious game design in the way that we do. I will put the references for this material in the description and thanks very much for your attention.